Hey everybody, it's Matt Furrier from Avid here once again in Park City, Utah at the Sundance Film Festival. As you know, we're talking to amazing editors, filmmakers, every now and then a composer. One, su one such amazing editor is Hannah Park. She's here with a film called Pony Boy. Hannah, I've heard other people talking about Pony Boy in the streets, so that's a good sign. That's great. Yeah, tell me about the film. What's, what is Pony Boy about? Pony Boy is about an intersex sex worker named Pony Boy and he runs from the mob after a drug deal goes wrong. And so it's kind of his um, adventures through 2006, 2003, New Jersey, um, lots of drugs, sex, um, crazy stuff happening. Yeah. I think that's why people are talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, certainly not rehashing an old trope there. Um, well, let's talk about how you got to be on the project. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I actually, found them well they found me through another editor we knew um named joanna noggle she edits the bear so she was busy with the bear so she recommended them to me and so they emailed me showed me the script and everything i really loved it loved um who they cast as well so i just hopped on board really quickly well the way you described the film i would love to know you said you loved the script um, were there things about it, that you, notes that you made, you thought, okay, we might have to pay attention to this, or this could be something I'm going to have to really focus on in post, anything like that? Um, I think the main thing was um, the whole Bruce character. I know you guys, nobody has seen it yet, but uh, a lot of the debate was happening later on about, you know, is he real or not? Are we going to lean into which way or the other? And so we ended up going one way, and so you guys will see, but... Yeah. And I also, we wanted to um, ground it because, you know, it kind of does border on a little bit of campiness sometimes. And so we wanted to make sure that our dramatic moments really like stuck and weren't like too, I don't know, jokey a little bit. Because, you know, when you involve like the mobsters of New Jersey, like it can kind of like get into that territory a little bit. Um, so that was really important to like ground the world, even though there were all these like really like psychedelic elements involved. I can't wait to see this myself. Uh, you know, something I I always operate under the assumption that in an indie film, you really don't have things like screenings, not in the same way as you might on a feature, but more and more editors are telling me like, oh no, we had screenings. How else could we have figured out whether this movie was working or not? Yeah. Did you guys have screenings? Yeah, we had a few in LA. So I flew out there to join um, all the producers. And so we had a couple screenings with people who knew the film, who didn't know the film, people who were also like a part of the LGBTQ community. And so it was really important to us to like listen to those perspectives as well, because, you know, Esteban, me, like the producers, we're just like not queer people. So I think it was really important to take into consideration um, maybe things that we were taking a little too far, like violence and like kind of, um, we didn't want to like trigger that in anybody. And so we, even though we were like, oh, like he's the villain, like he's supposed to be scary and tough, but sometimes you got to like reel it back a little bit because excessive violence is like not resonating with them very sure. well. And like it, it is for like that community too, this movie. So you said you flew out to LA. Where were you cutting the film? I was still cutting in New York, but um, when we were in LA for like a few weeks, I was going back and forth from my mom's apartment in Koreatown, Los Angeles, to my director's house, like 20 minutes away. So it was like a funny, like two week period. <laughs> and what was the editorial setup that you had? Um, I was editing on Avid. Uh, we had a Daily's house at, uh, during production who was uh, sending me like bins back and forth to edit footage with. Um, and yeah, it was just Avid, yeah. Just to have it. Uh, that's, something, that's really all it is. Uh, when you are working remote from all those people, what was the process that you had for collaborating with one another? Interesting. Um, well, we would send a lot of cuts through frame, and then Esteban was based in LA for most of the time, but he flew out to New York for, I think, for like a few weeks at a time. Um, and so we would edit in person. But other than that, it was uh, reviewing stuff like over Zoom or just like do doing notes back and forth. Yeah. So once you found out that you were you were in at Sundance, uh, again, this is another question that varying degrees. Some editors are like, I didn't have to do a thing. All my work was done in editorial. Yeah. And other editors are like, yeah, there was work that I had to do to prep for Sundance and prep for the screenings. How did that work for you? I didn't have to do anything either, yeah. <laughs> the last time I like did anything for the project was sitting in on like sound mixing sessions and like made sure everything was like sounding good and clean and nice. Um, but yeah, that's like the last time I ever uh, had anything to do with it until I got the lovely email that we were in Sundance. <laughs> yeah, well, that is a lovely email. Uh, you know, uh, films that get into Sundance typically are not, um, they're just like you described. They're very complex in tone and, and challenging in, in narrative. Um, so I'm going to use that word challenge again for you. What was the biggest challenge in working on Pony Boy? 
Oh, the challenge. I think the challenge, uh, kind of similar to what I said about grounding the movie a little bit. Um, we wanted to make Ponyboy feel like a real sympathetic person because, you know, he does, he has behaviors in the movie that people will disagree with. Um, you know, is, is he a good friend to his best friend or not? Um, so we wanted to early on establish that this is a person who is hurt and traumatized and he's acting out of like those types of like lived experiences mm -hmm. in order to gain sympathy with our main character, which you want to do. Um, so that was like a really challenging thing. So we had to rearrange the beginning a little bit mm -hmm. to introduce those ideas um, a little earlier than the script had. Well, clearly your hard work has paid off because as I said, just walking around the streets here, one of the films you hear people talking about is Pony Boy. So congratulations on that and thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me thank today. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I love this podcast so much. Oh, oh okay. Well, <laughs> uh, sound bite for you. Uh, yeah, really. Okay, keep rolling. We got more to talk about. Now, uh, well, there you have it. Hannah Park from Pony Boy. Again, another amazing editor here at Sundance. If you stick with us here on the Avid Social Media channels, you're going to hear more of them. Stay tuned. Yay.